Hey everyone, thanks for um, being here. Um, I'm Sam. Um, yeah, so let's get started. So I'm the CEO of Carbon, um, which is a stablecoin group. Um, so our goal is to um, build a more inclusive and efficient global economy by creating a um, cryptocurrency that remains pegged to the US dollar, so that no matter what happens, it will always be at around $1. And we'll go into kind of why this is important um, later in the talk. So Carbon um, started um, as a side project of myself, uh, of Gavin's and mine back in June of 2017. Um, Gavin and myself were both Stanford in um, 2018. I was studying computer science with a concentration in, in AI. He did symbolic systems, but mostly did AI for both Salesforce and Uber. Um, we were both, we'd both been heavily involved in the crypto space for years prior to that. Um, and we decided to kind of start working on Carbon because we realized that um, what we wanted to do at, that, at this stage of our lives is kind of work on something that we believe could have massive impact. Um, we were kind of, we've picked, we put, we put together a pretty good team along the way. Um, we grabbed Miles, who was a, on the original team of Hashgraph, also a very early ETH investor, um, and Connor, who was from Consensus. And we followed the um, Amazon principle of only hiring people who are more competent than ourselves. Um, so we grabbed David Segura, who was a um, fr friend of mine, I've him almost as a mentor, um, who was a founder from the ad tech space with an eight-figure exit a couple years back. Um, we grabbed Nick, um, Princeton CS, um, grabbed him from Barclays. We were really impressed by his ability to kind of both bridge the technical and the non-technical world. Um, then we grabbed Andrea, who's our corporate counsel. She was head of legal of North America at TransferWise. And we viewed TransferWise, um, we viewed the entire remittance sector as having dealt with many of the issues that we're facing in crypto, both in terms of kind of combining um, money transmission regulation alongside tech. So why stablecoin? Um, the easiest answer is because it's the best form of crypto. <laughs> um, cryptocurrencies kind of have revolutionized a lot of um, how we perceive value by solving kind of the double spend problem, which has been a foundational problem in, in just kind of CS as well as just um, managing um, value. Um, trustlessness is a huge asset, but um, trustlessness with a non, with a, with a um, fixed supply resource has intrinsic volatility. And what this means is basically all cryptocurrencies are essentially lottery tickets because as long as it's scarce, it's going to remain volatile. Um, volatility is not just a problem in crypto, however. Um, there's a lot of currencies around the globe um, that also experience massive inflation. And inflation, hyperinflation is a complex topic um, because it's not just prices going up. It also triggers a mass amount of uncertainty around how prices will move. Um, so if, with any of these countries, the process of the currency getting that inflated is a roller coaster, where the currency going up and down, up and down, up and down, and it wipes out credit markets. Um, it destroys any mechanism of financial planning. Um, it m destroys all paper assets. Um, and I, uh, as Daniel was, t was telling you guys, I went through this personally um, growing up under the Polito regime in the Dominican Republic. Um, yeah, so something, um, one of the reasons crypto has been so powerful um, in today's both economy and society is because of um, the, because of trustlessness. Um, and a really good example of this, there's been a lot of research around um, banking um, over the past couple hundred years. And something that they found was that bankers mostly gave loans to people who were either family members or friends of the bankers. And this isn't, some, this isn't because bankers are bad, this isn't because um, bankers are nepotistic, it's because um, those are the only people the bankers could trust. If you had to give a large sum of money to someone, um, you would only give it to someone you knew. Um, and so trustlessness has a lot of, being able to kind of have digital trustlessness massively expands um, the amount of people who can interact with um, the digital economy. And this is kind of where we see crypto heading. Um, there's 1.7 billion um, unbanked adults in the world, people with, who have no bank accounts and no mechanism for interacting with any digital services or um, digital assets. Um, for the first time in history, we have higher penetration um, of technology than, um, financial as than financial access for most of the world. Um, a lot of people have smart, there's a lot of people on the, on the planet who have smartphones, but no bank account. And that's kind of where we see, we believe that a stable coin can be the native currency with this entire, pop, this entire segment of the population. Um, okay, then. So stable coins provide stability on a massive scale. And 
Circling back to kind of the point about um, underbanked people, there are also a bunch of underbanked industries. So industries that aren't directly tied to any kind of source of truth in the existing economy, um, who just don't have access to everything that we take for granted. Um, and a lot of these, so like the remittance network, so an example of an underbanked population would be the entire, um, the undocumented aliens in this country, for example, just have no access to any form of financial services because they just don't have legal identities. Um, there's sectors like, um, Cannabis is a sector that also has no access to any form of capital markets because, because of just the lack of regulatory clarity. And it's not necessarily illegal in many states to do business with this, but the risk is too high for existing trusted actors to risk licenses on. So we see stablecoins kind of providing a bank for the rest, um, just a bank for anyone, anywhere, a um, trusted um, mechanism for um, accessing financial services, which leads into the next point, financial services. We view this as kind of a foundational layer, filling the gap between cash and the existing trust-based account system um, that will allow us to expand over time into being the primary mechanism for debt and credit and saving for all of these underbanked people. Um, everyone's safe room. We view, the, we view um, stable coins as a mechanism for um, hedging against all forms of volatility. Um, and this kind of applies to people who are trading. This also applies to people in countries that are experiencing a lot of um, Chaos. So this, this applies equally to a crypto trader um, in a bear market and to someone in Venezuela who's worried about what's going to happen to their currency. Um, an economy of us. We're really excited about down the road. We're, the gap, the, the role that we um, view crypto in general and stablecoins specifically playing is allowing for arbitrary, um, arbitrary complexity in the contracts between actors. And what this means, um, and we'll get more into this a, a bit down the road, but what this really means is that we believe that we can kind of convert most of the relationships in the existing economy into code. Um, then economic interoperability. We view stablecoins as kind of the, as a mechanism for connecting all value everywhere. So bridging um, all currencies, bridging all assets, um, and allowing seamless, feeless, secure transmission of value between everything. <laughs> So we, we, there's clear immediate use cases for stablecoins. Um, so exchanges and crypto traders, um, these can be used, stablecoins have historically been used mainly for hedging. Um, when, whenever, the, whenever Bitcoin goes down, people move into stablecoins because it gets them around the fees from transitioning between crypto and fiat. Low friction payments. Um, stablecoins, Carbon is today one of the cheapest ways for me to send money from myself to Miles, my co-founder over there. Um, Stable money in developing economies. There are $9 trillion of negative yielding bonds in the developing world. So these are bonds that you buy and lose money on, but you still buy them because um, you lose less money holding the bonds than you do your native currency. Um, smart contract integration. Um, we've, we think stable coins are the natural common denominator and natural fee structure for most smart contracts. And I, for one, am very, um, very excited about what smart contracts have to offer. So stable coins need to be rethought. Um, Stablecoins have been a very kind of exciting and very high growth um, sector in the crypto economy over the past couple months. Um, a lot of these projects, um, while they're academically interesting and definitely very creative, tend to kind of um, ignore a lot of the wisdom that's been developed over the millennia of human banking and tend to kind of put a premium on being creative as opposed to being actually kind of scalable. Like we, we believe that um, we believe what we're building is going to be a, a massive asset to everyone everywhere, but only if we're able to um, prove that it works over a long period of time and establish that it is both, that it's robust, both um, legally and from a technological standpoint. Um, so we decided to kind of take a hybrid approach on this. Um, and, and what that means is we are, we are hybridizing both fiat-backed and algorithmic. So today you can go to, on our website and, um, you, and purchase a um, ERC-20 token um, that's backed one-to-one -one with a dollar in an FDIC-insured account. And we took this route because we view it as a way um, to, build up the, to build up the reputation for being a good actor in this space and being something that people can rely on um, while we wait for markets to get to a point where they can't sustain an algorithmic stablecoin. So what this means, let's kind of dive into fiat-backed and algorithmic. So Tether is probably the most well-known fiat-backed stablecoin. Tether allegedly um, has $1 per token and a bank. 
Um, and there's a lot of, that's a whole can of worms I don't want to open. But um, there's also um, Gemini, Circle, there's a bunch of people doing this. Um, algorithmic is something like basis. Um, and the idea there is that um, you can trust kind of an algorithm to maintain collateralization. And what this comes down to is basically um, adjusting supply and reactions to demand. So if, the, if people, if demand is above supply, then the price will go above a dollar. If supply is above demand, then um, the price will fall below a dollar. So the, the fundamental innovation of all these systems is adjusting supply to be in line with demand. Um, the issue with, so a good analogy for fiat backed is I trust a friend to hold a dollar of mine. Um, and he gives me a coupon that says it's worth a dollar. And that's kind of what Tether was, that's what Gemini is, that's what we are now. Um, this is only as, this coupon's only as good as my trust in my friend. Uh, if my friend is, if my friend loses the dollar, if my friend is dishonest, um, the coupon's worthless. What an algorithmic stablecoin is, is trusting a market, um, so essentially trusting a futures contract to give me a dollar in the future. Um, and the market distributes risk. There's no one party risk with the market system, but you need to have a liquid market that you can trust to maintain liquidity indefinitely. And that takes a lot of time and a lot of um, resources to build up. And we also just don't believe um, with current throughput um, and just current, this current state of crypto, I can talk all day about why markets aren't liquid right now. <laughs> um, yeah, so the MetaToken is kind of our key innovation for the hybrid model, which this gives us a riskless and transparent mechanism for actually adjusting the backing on the token that's getting listed right now. So down the road, when markets are more liquid and when um, there's less noise in the space, we will be able to transition to a algorithmic backing, to trusting a market as, to, as opposed to trusting an individual. And we think, so we think some of the key innovations of crypto are, are um, a heavy emphasis on both transparency and immutability. And so those are the principles that we use as a guiding principles in developing our mechanism for upgrading. And what this looks like is um, any upgrade, any change to the composition of the backing of the token uh, will first get broadcast to the entire network. So all upgrades are visible weeks in advance to everyone who holds the token. And this gives people the ability to cash out if they don't believe the upgrade is the right direction for the, to for the token. So why Hashgraph? Back when um, Gavin and I started working on the white paper in June of 2017, um, when he was still at Uber and I was still at um, Plenty, um, we didn't really believe this was viable with the existing um, technology. Um, both in terms of throughput and all kinds of insecurity issues like auction front running, um, there's a whole host of reasons you, can't, you, can't, you couldn't do this with, last, with the last generation of um, cryptocurrency technology. So we, were, we actually, um, Hashgraph played a pivotal, a central role in us deciding to move forward with Carbon. Because um, it's fair due to the timestamps, there's no auction front running, it's fast, the throughput is out of this world. Um, it's secure, um, and it's governed. Um, there's no risk of something that we've studied closely, it's a huge risk for crypto collateralized stablecoin models, is um, the propensity to over leverage. Um, and we believe that Hashgraph, um, we believe its governance aligns the incentives of um, the chain and the people who make decisions. So what's next? So go, going, circling back to something I brought up before, we really think, um, so we think that stable coins are kind of by, by far the most natural common denominator for the vast majority of crypto projects. Um, and we've already kind of started seeing this in how, utility, um, how, how the utility token models have evolved. Because having a, volatile, um, having a volatile common denominator just doesn't make much sense. Um, it, it creates a lot of risk for all the parties in the system. So we view Carbon as playing a central role in how um, smart contracts uh, will eventually impact how all values exchanged. So Visa's core, Visa's primary asset is their 1,031-page um, th rulebook. And this governs the rights of every party in the Visa network. So who can, who can um, claw back fees from who, um, what recourse each party has, there's a disagreement. Um, but that's, that's a single rule book that governs, that governs every Visa transaction. So it governs um, when I buy an airline ticket, it also governs when I um, buy, a, buy an espresso. We believe that, um, we believe that kind of ground up driven rules around value transfer are going to be, are a better solution than having one, than having one set fits all. And so we, um, and we believe smart contracts are going to play a central role in kind of creating this distributed, um, this distributed network of um, value transfer. So going global, 
we, we think carbon, um, we think stable coins and carbon specifically are by far one of the best mechanisms for moving value between um, actors globally. We're investing heavily in fiat on off ramps in a variety of jurisdictions. Um, we're investing, we're also um, working very closely with a handful of partners to make our, to increase the amount of redundancy in our system, to make it the most robust system domestically. Um, it's really embarrassing how like um, primitive many of the stablecoin structures are. So the future, um, global, and interoperable, global and interoperable value. I've touched on that. Um, I've covered that pretty extensively. Um, decentralized derivatives and debt credit. So this ties back into the um, point below that too. Decentralized liquidity. We believe that um, the future of crypt crypto is pooled liquidity. Um, and what this means is one order book, um, one unified order book across all exchanges, across all platforms. And we think this is also the best solution to the Oracle problem. So we're investing heavily in um, helping, both helping explore solutions here as well as develop them. And we're going to be, um, we believe that this is going to be pivotal to taking crypto to the next stage. It's very similar to what we saw with the um, New York Stock Exchange and the regional exchanges back in the 80s. Um, and then finally, the post-dollar world. So currently, the real Oracle problem with how inflation is measured, um, people use, the, the government uses PPIs and CPIs, producer price indexes and consumer price indexes. Um, currently, we're outsourcing the vast majority of our Oracle problem onto the government. We're, just try, like, we're using the dollar as a mechanism for gauging prices. Um, down the road, we believe it is viable to move beyond the dollar. And this isn't something, going back to our upgrade mechanism, this isn't something that's going to get sprung on anyone. This will be something that's openly discussed and openly explored. Um, for years before it actually goes live. But we think it is, it's something that's very exciting because it's something that um, we believe that it is possible to have a currency that's more foundational and more stable than the US dollar. Although the dollar's pretty, the dollar's pretty damn good though. Um, and then finally, I want to kind of take this opportunity to um, launch the Carbon Ambassador program. We've had, um, we were, two of our co-founders actually were Hashgraph um, ambassadors back in the day. Uh, Gavin, um, the other Stanford guy, was like, he arranged with a lot of the Bay Area meetups. Um, we've had a handful of um, Hashgraph ambassadors who've reached out from countries like Venezuela and Argentina um, who wanted to kind of spearhead a carbon ambassador program. And so we're going to take this opportunity to kind of follow in um, Hashgraph's footsteps and um, launch that now. So as of now, we have an ambassador program. Um, yeah. And if you, if you want more information or have any questions, reach out at team at carbon.money. Thanks. Thanks.